After weeks of speculation, Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales, revealed late last week that she has been undergoing preventative chemotherapy treatment for cancer. The news comes after her pre-planned abdominal surgery in January. And joining me live now is radiation oncologist Dr. Derek Singh with more on what exactly this preventative treatment could look like. Dr. Sang, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, we'll start off with preventative chemotherapy. What exactly is that and how does it differ from general chemo? So in cancer treatment, um, the, we categorize them into main three buckets, which is surgery, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy. And in this case, it sounds like, without you know, knowing more details, that the primary treatment has been the surgery, and I do hope that it was uh, successful. It sounds like it has been. And then um, the goal of ke uh, preventative chemotherapy, or what we often call adjuvant chemotherapy, is really some added treatment to get rid of any um, cancer cells that could be left behind to really maximize the chance of a cure. Right, just a, a backup, if you will, just to make sure that uh, everything has been taken care of. And uh, again, we know that you can't speak directly to this case because we don't have a lot of detail as well on this. But when it comes to preventative chemotherapy, is there is it administered in the same way as general chemo? And is there a difference in recovery or how it impacts your body? Generally, chemotherapy can be given um, typically intravenously. Uh, through through an uh, injection in the vein, um, on occasion by mouth orally, and um, my expectation is that it would be similar to general chemotherapy in that it would be cycles um, or um, doses given every two to four weeks and then repeated as the body heals from each dose of um, uh, of treatment. And what can that impact on the body look like and that recovery look like from these treatments? The, depending on the specific type of chemotherapy given, sometimes the body tolerates it extremely well. Mm -hmm. In other times, it can cause um, general symptoms like fatigue, sometimes some nausea, sometimes some gastrointestinal upset. Um, though most uh, uh, patients recover well after each cycle of chemotherapy so that they can get the whole prescribed course of treatment. Mm -hmm. It's just tough to recover and then come back to, ha you know, having to have that treatment cycle once again, uh, you know, three to four times. It is a lot, but of course, with a good cause and intention behind it. Um, you know, your thoughts when you heard about this diagnosis on Friday with the rest of the world and what do you think it does for people who are, you know, looking at themselves and thinking, should I be screened? That's a great question, um, and I think there are a number of cancers for whom we, uh, for which we have excellent screening programs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to mine comes uh, breast cancer screening program, colorectal screening program, and cervical cancer screening program. And I would encourage um, folks who may have questions about those to talk with their primary care practitioner or family doctor about what screening is best suited for them specifically. All right, Dr. Derek Singh, thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate your time here. And, uh, you know, once again, giving us a little bit of insight. Unfortunately, cancer touches so many families, but a little bit of insight into what may be happening with people who do have to do this preventative kind of therapy. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, it's 8.07 here on BT. We're going to take a look at that forecast right now. We're going to say good morning to Frank Fairjean.